Hello and welcome back to AP Psychology here on Educator.com. This segment we're going to be taking a look at testing and individual differences and we're going to be taking, uh, among other things, not just uh, IQ tests but also a number of other kinds of tests that uh, are used to measure human behavior. First, um, from the AP, from the College Board, testing and individual differences 5 to 7 percent on your multiple choice portion. And so when we see these questions, um, it's only going to be out of 100 questions between 5 and 7 in that neighborhood. So we're going to be looking at standardi standardization and norms, reliability and validity, types of tests that are used in psychometrics, and then ethics and standards in testing. And then, of course, we're going to be looking at uh, the design of tests, including uh, standardization strategies and other techniques to establish reliability and validity, two incredibly important parts to understanding standardized tests. So the thing about Americans is that we love to measure things. Uh, we love to give them numbers. If you, uh, if you follow baseball and some of the football and, and basketball, the, there are some things called uh, sabermetrics. I'm not sure if that's E-R or R-E, uh, but sabermetrics. There, we have, we used, when I was growing up, we had batting average, RBIs, runs scored, uh, singles, doubles, triples, home runs. Um, it was a very, very basic set of statistics. But once we got computers involved, we the, the people who got into the stats just absolutely go nuts. In fact, just recently, uh, ESPN hired a guy named Nate Silver, who started off with analyzing baseball stats, but then he got into pol uh, politics and economics and some other things. And he's going back to ESPN to do an awful lot of sports stats, but he's probably most famous for a website called 538.com. And with 538.com, that's the number of electoral votes that you have in a presidential election. And the last two recent elections, he picked 50 out of 50 states accurately. So he's basically batting 1,000 for the last um, two uh, presidential elections. So the man knows his stats and uh, ESPN hired him away from the New York Times. So caution in this unit. One of the things that you need to realize is that just because there's a number on something doesn't make it a good number. So we have to be aware of definitions or in the case of psychology, operational definitions, because a lot of these numbers can be misunderstood and misused. So caution when we're looking at all these various numbers. So not only do we ask, what am I measuring, but what am I not measuring when I measure this one thing? Because a lot of people will say, oh, I have an IQ of such and such. Certain things should be easy for me or certain things should happen for me in my life. And that's where you're not measuring lots of other things when you're measuring one thing or a maybe, uh, maybe even a series of things. So you have to be careful when you're looking at all of these numbers. You have to ask yourself, does this test give me all the information I need when looking at this individual or this group? Are you defined solely by your IQ score? Am I? Hopefully the answer is no. There's lots more to us than our SAT scores, our IQ scores, our ACT scores, our scores on the most recent AP exam that we may have taken. We are more than just those numbers. And so that's one of the cautions that I urge you to take when looking at this unit is not to oversimplify reality for the sake of a number. And then kind of going back to the operational definition, what is the construct? A construct is a definition of what it is that I'm wanting to measure. When I create a construct, I'm creating a series of characteristics and qualities that I'm using to define the term that I'm measuring. So whether the term is intelligence, self-concept, self-esteem, depression, psychoticism, neuroticism, agreeableness, openness, all those things, what is the operational definition? Does that definition reflect what it needs to? And what should it measure? And so those are some key questions that you must keep in mind when we're looking at any kinds of the, any, any of these kinds of tests, but also when if you get into the point where you become a psychometrist and you are making these kinds of a test, these kinds of tests. 